Hey guys, how are y'all today? Give me a thumbs up. Tell me you can see me, hear me, that all is going well in my world and your world today. Good to see you, Francie. Glad to see you made it live. You too, Miss Cindy. Good to see everybody rolling in. Um, let us know where you're from. You never know. Somebody might have BES, PE Design, or Canvas Workspace working next to you, or any of the other wonderful brother programs that we have out there. So good to see everybody rolling in. Um, I hope everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving, safe holiday travel. Um, we took us 13 hours to get back from Florida. Woohoo! It was a wonderful time. Never travel on the Saturday that there is a Florida and Florida State football game at Florida. <laughs> we thought we were being smart leaving on Saturday instead of sun and Sunday. Not so much. It was still about the same travel time. So it was a wonderful time. Oh, good, Cindy. Thanks. I appreciate you sharing the show. Um, always, you know, if you guys, you, you know, to ring those little bells on um, YouTube and to like on Facebook and to follow on Facebook. I always forget to tell you, but I appreciate it whenever you share, like, follow all of those wonderful things. So um, Tracy from the Education Connection had a question and I'm going to answer hers first and then I'll answer other questions that pop in. Um, we have someone here with us, Catherine, Katharina from Germany. Good to see you. Glad to, you're joining us. Uh, what time is it there? Six hours difference or is it seven hours from me? I'm trying to remember. It's well into the evening for you, I do believe. So anyhow. All right, guys. Let's get started. And oh, by the way, I don't live in Georgia any longer. Jane read, evidently, I must need to go change my website again. So yesterday she introduced me and said I was from Georgia. Um, no, I, I don't live in Georgia any longer. I am back in Tennessee. So <laughs> those of you that are in the state of Tennessee, it's great. All right, guys. So um, Tracy's question is how to get rid of jump stitches or how to get rid of the traveling stitches that happened when she create when she made a design on her dream machine. And I'm not sure why she took it to BES instead of PE design, because now she's wanting to fix it in PE design. I would have brought it into PE design to begin with. But in the process, she got a lot of traveling stitches. So I'm going to show you how to get rid of traveling stitches in a design that some that you didn't do in your software and we're going to do it in p design so let me share my screen here let's see here share screen and then if there's other questions i will answer those and if there aren't i will share something i've been that i did yesterday so oh kelly you're at home today not working i don't get to call you out on being at work Plumber, <laughs> I always enjoy doing that to you. So you can see this right here. She's got a ton of, and these are not jumps. These are actually stitches. If we look in here, you can see that those are actually going to stitch. So the way it got converted, it gave those stitches. Now, in order to play with this, uh, she must have converted it to blocks as well once she got over here because it's somehow grouped. So we have to ungroup the whole kit and caboodle before we can start playing with it. We're going to ungroup it twice because evidently it's grouped twice. I'm not real sure why, but no big deal. Then we're going to come in and zoom in. So you grab your select tool, grab your select point tool and click on the line where you've got an issue. So there, this line right here is an issue. And it, if I move it, you can tell that it's attached. And what I'm going to do is the reason I picked the middle of it is because this makes it easier to figure out what to delete. We're going to right mouse click and choose split at point. And so you'll notice it split that line. So now I can press that point, press delete. And now it's a jump stitch from that point over. Let's select this one and press delete. And if you notice, I now have a jump stitch all the way across. And I know it's a jump stitch because it has a dash line instead of the straight lines with stitches. You can also look at it in solid preview and you'll notice that that line is gone, but these are not. So if I want to work on this one, I do the same thing. Add a point right there, right mouse click on it, split it point, then select that one, press delete, click on the next one, select that point, press delete. 
And you would basically continue doing this until all of those little jump stitches are gone. So I'm working in realistic preview right now so that you guys could see that the jump stitches are going away or the travel stitches are going away, not jump stitches. And I would click add a point, split it point, click on the line, press delete, click on the line, the opposite side of that line. And I personally would come in here and fix this ear just a bit. Click on the point, press delete. So add a point, split it point, click on the point, press delete, click on the other side of that line, click on that point and press delete. And you do the do it for every single line that you have there. And we so and continue that in that manner until they're all gone. So if you I can finish this. This is not that impress not that hard to do. So we're gonna keep clicking on our line, adding a point, clicking on that point, and pressing delete. I'm almost done. I'm adding one right there split it point, click on that line, press delete, click on this one and press delete. So this one has a double line. So we'll split that one at point first, click on it, press delete. And I would probably tuck this one in instead of pressing delete. Split it point. Click on that point, press delete, click on that point and press delete. We're almost done. Looks like we have one last one to go. Split it point. Click on the line, press delete. Click on the opposite line and press delete. And there we go. So I would also probably go ahead and attach that. And a way to attach, if I want it to attach totally, I can grab this point, hold my alt key down and attach it to one of those X's. Wherever there's an X, when it gets red over the top of it, when you let go, it's now attached to that point. So that should have that part fixed. I mean, I seriously, though, would go back. You can right mouse click and delete. I just press the delete key on my keyboard. That's my way. Or that's I use the keyboard. Uh, it's but you can right mouse click and choose delete. Don, it, it's whatever you want to do. So are the parts I'm removing the lines from lock so that, okay. So it automatically, when the machine stops on um, the brother machines, when the machine stops, it automatically ties off. It's just the way it is. So um, you don't necessarily need to go in and put in a tie off stitch. It will automatically do that. Um, so that, and so that's, that's done. That's the way to do it. Now, what I will tell you is that in the process of converting that to blocks in uh, converting it to outline in BES, you'll notice that it made some messes here. So I really would do the PHC file and bring it in and look at it as opposed to this, because otherwise this is not going to stitch very well. You're going to have some knots and nasties and that's not going to be very pretty. So uh, just letting you know that. Um, how do I get the candle waking stitch to fill in a letter shape on P design, sort of like a rhinestone look? Well, the candle waking stitch is a fill stitch. So I mean, it's not a fill stitch. It's a outline stitch. So what you could do is, um, let's see here. Hold on. Let me go and think about this one for just a second. Let's just do file new and we're not going to save that. Uh, a letter, and let's say, let's just do an A. And I'm going to make kind of a block letter instead. We'll do an athletic letter. All right, so what could we do? We can change that to a fill, a programmable. Let's convert that to blocks. Maybe. What do I want to convert that to? I want to convert it to outline, but it's not going to let me. Why is it not letting me convert that to outline? Oh, because it's a, U, a UD font. Hold on. Hang tight for a second. There. Now, let's convert it to an outline. And then 
you have to find kind of a linear shape for this to work. Um, let's see what net fill does. And let's space that net fill out a bit. I'm not promising this will work. But then what we can do is convert line region to line. And at that point, then your candle wicking stitch would become available. Not optimal. So let's let's undo that. Undo twice. And let's see. Hmm. Oh, I know what we can do. A motif stitch. And let's pick a line stitch. Hold on. Let me get out of my motifs and into the programs motifs. Um, but I'm bum bum. Where would that be? It would be on my C drive. Program files x86. Brother. He designed 11 patterns. And there is a line right here. We'll say OK. So that's converted. Now let's convert region to line and then do a candle wicking stitch. There you go. Um, you can change the size of those to make them smaller. You can spread them further apart and you can change their densities. So that would be about the that would be about your best method of doing that. Now there's there's some cleanup that would need to be done because of the way it did the motif. We might if I undo and undo, let's get back to where it was the motif. Okay, there we go. There's our motif. Let's see here. If we change our vertical spacing, maybe. There we go. That looks better. Now let's try it. Convert region to line and then come in candle wicking stitch. That's a better option. Okay. So, all right. Yes, good deal. So that that would be the that would be your best bet. So choose that line motif, convert it to read, convert region to line, and then choose candle wicking stitch. Um, P Design Plus does work with the Luminaire, but if you have P Design 11, you do not need plus. It's not more. It's less. Um, it's the light version of the program. So just kind of keep that in mind. <laughs> Patty, I play and your your superpower is keeping up with what I play with on a on a given day. But um, just being able I play um, and I grew. I mean, I basically grew up with this program. I've had it since my 30s. So um, I've had it a few years. I've had every single version of the program. So I've, as things have come out. I've embraced them and that's, I mean, I, but I touch and play with it a lar large portion of the time. So let me see here. Um, somebody, I saw a question up here somewhere. Yes, Barbara, you can do a knockdown stitch in PE design. I'm sure I've done this on another episode, but I'll be happy to show you real quick. So um, if, are you wanting to do it with text or are you wanting to do it with a design? I'll show you both ways. If I have a text and I let's say I want to put Merry Christmas on something. And I want to knock down around that. It is not a one click wonder. I will tell you that you're going to go home and you're going to choose the embroidered patch wizard is this is my favorite way of doing it. If you choose your embroidered patch wizard. Choose the distance you want it from your original pattern. So how far off, how far of an offset do you want it from the original pattern? Just choose running stitch and click OK. And you'll notice how it puts an outline around that area. So then I would ungroup, but you don't necessarily have to, but I would. And then I would click these two pieces right here and select them. Turn on your fill stitch to a net fill stitch. And then choose sewing attributes and choose the last option. 
that's a pretty good one. And then I tend to take it down to about two millimeters and then take it and have it sew first right here. Just press the, sew, the sewing order button right here. Choose sew first and it moves it to the beginning and you now have a knockdown. <clears throat> so that's how you do it with that one. Let's move this up. I'll group it back. I'll group it together now. Don't necessarily have to ungroup it. I just did. If I import a design, on the other hand, let's say I want it around this design. Same thing. Embroidered patch wizard. Choose how far from your original pattern you want it to be. This time I'll make it a little bit further so you guys can see it going further around it. So, so now you see it's around the outside edge. Go and pick it up and select it. Change it to a net fill stitch. Go to your sewing attributes, choose the third option and reduce the spacing. And then have it sew before that in that design. So just drag it up in your sewing order window to where you want it to sew. And there you go. Um, sew it in the color that's going to be close to what you're stitching on. So um, I usually will pick us either, I usually pick a slightly darker color than the base of the towel or whatever I'm embroidering on. Or if it's a white stocking, just do white. It doesn't really matter. So um, that's what I would, that's what I would say is just go, go in and pick a color that you're going to plant that's close to the base so that it disappears. You don't notice it. Okay. You started with version five. That's been a while too. I mean, we've had a lot. I've been with brother since I introduced their version six of the software. So that's been a few years. I think that was like 2004. Um, uh, yes, I've been with brother for almost 20 years now. That's kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. So let's see here. New comments. I see a new comment. I just got to get down to it. It's not. There we go. All right. And Kelly, you started with version one too. So it, it's been a few years, hasn't it? So how many, okay, well that, this is actually a good question. How many of you all started with 11? How many of you all started with version one? What versions did we start with? So, because if you had version one up to now, life has changed so much that it's not even funny. I mean, I can remember when I first started, and I wanted to do, it was, I was doing a logo for somebody and I believe it was Health South. I, I believe it was this right here. And really it, all it was, was basically a, a block font. And I think we had 20 fonts at the time, but it was basically this block font. Okay. And it had a slant. Well, I couldn't figure out how to make it slant. We didn't have this nice little button over here. We did have transform, but I didn't know that it was there. And it, I ended up basically manually punching the Health South logo when all I had to do was basically type it in, do a little transformation, and move the letters where they needed to go. Because I think the T was setting up against that. And the H was setting up against this. It was a whole lot harder than it had to be. So it comes, you know, that it was like a bell, you know, the, the magic bell rings when you finally find that button that would make it go right, go work really easy. <laughs> I remember that one, Linda. I was writing a book at the same time that you had released yours. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's been many, many times, many, many years. So started with version three and your first upgrade was version four. Boy, you waited a while to upgrade. I, oh no, version three. So, um, that when we went from four to five and we got the dongle, the USB dongle, that was, that was a really nice upgrade if I recall correctly. You started with five, um, you know, the thing about it is software is not going to software is one of those things. You just have to touch the buttons and stop being afraid of it. It's 
start, what I've told people, what we all start doing is we are crazy in that we take on that business job when we first get this, because we're trying to pay for our stuff. And the first thing we try to do is somebody's logo, which is somebody else's vision, not our own. So we're playing with something that we don't have a clue as to how to use it. We're trying to do something to meet somebody else's vision instead of our own. And we get frustrated instead of playing with something seeing what you can create what you can do that's fun for yourself and then moving on once you know your tools because once you know your tools pretty much anything is possible it's just a matter of learning those tools um yes <clears throat> uh you know and really how how did i learn to digitize well i watched embroidery design so I watched them embroider out. I, I watched to see the ones that I thought were good designs and the ones that I thought were poor designs. And you, you can tell a difference. And the ones with underlay on them always stitched much better. And I can remember the beginning embroidery designs that we had with brother. They were terribly digitized. I mean, they, they, they were somebody just auto punched them and didn't do anything exciting with them. So it was, um, you know, it was just kind of one of those things that we, you learn, you learn. Okay. So they did it. They did something and I want to do that. So how can I make it do that? And that's watching that. I mean, that's how I learned stabilizers back in the day. We didn't have any, we didn't have these fun stabilizers that we have now gang. You had, we went to stores and Linda, you can back me up on this. We would go into the stores, look at the back side of those shirts to see what stabilizer they'd put on them. And then we would go home and try to figure out what we had that might work with that because we didn't have the same stuff that we have in this day. So we watched, we watched things embroider. We, we went and looked and saw what looked good on the garment. And then we decided, okay, well, that's, that's like a, a, a cutaway. Huh? Huh? We'll try that. <laughs> Although they did. I mean, it, it just, things have really developed in this world since we first started. Um, <clears throat> oh no. So Cindy, if you call tech support, they will help you. You just gonna have to get the right agent, um, but they will help you. They'll elevate it up. So, um, and, and yes, P design has changed the most. It's, it was, when it came out, and I, you'll agree with me on this, Linda, I, when I went out shopping for digitizing software, because I had that little handheld scanner thing and I didn't like it. Um, it was great for what it was, but it wouldn't do what I wanted to do. So I went out looking for digitizing software and I tried everybody's. I went and checked out the shops, tried them all. And I was having to put, put things in point by point. And I'm like, wow, I don't want to do that. I drove back by the brother dealer on my way home after writing a check. I had the check written out for a Viking machine. I just didn't like the way it sounded and the way it stitched. My brother, my, I had a little PE five or Deco 500, which was a brother machine, but sold by Bernina. Um, and it stitched beautifully and it sounded much better than theirs and it looked better. So I, I had that check written out for $5,000 and I'm like, and I just don't really like that. So I drove back by the brother dealership on my way home from there. And by gosh, I bought a, back then it was an 8200 and P design one side unseen and never regretted it. So I bought it off a spec sheet. Haven't regretted it since because it, there's, there was a big learning curve. And so I certainly understand where you're coming from that you don't know when you don't know how to do something, because I can remember that frustration. I can remember, I mean, scanners were early in the market. I took three or four or five back because my image kept saying, it kept saying bitmap too large or small. I didn't realize that when the brother person said that we needed to buy a scanner that was at least 300 DPI, that that didn't mean scan at 300 DPI. I didn't know that you could change it. So, and neither did the people at the store. So, we had, and it was a great little machine. And, you know, the, the um, little 2850D is that machine basically that has been revamped, way revamped. And yes, way before YouTube and classes and 
I mean, shoot, AOL, AOL was in its early days. I'm, I'm aging myself here really bad. I didn't even have an email when I started with this. So it's, it's been, been a few years. Let's see here. So it's kind of funny. So yes, I, it, I can see how the genome, it's different because our, in our densities respond differently. So when I go to a different software, I have to think backwards from what I'm used to. Instead of increasing the number to increase my density, I have to decrease the number to increase my density because it's decreasing the space between them instead of increasing the number of lines. So that's you have to think of it in those terms. <clears throat> um, let's see here. Any other questions? So it, it's so we have everything from started with version 11 to started with version three to started with version one. Um, Fran started with Next. Next was a good, good build to start with. It, it was a nice build. Um, it, it, I, and I'm with you, DJ. I, I like, I like making my own stuff. Um, because, so, I mean, people ask me all the time, uh, have you stitched so-and-so's designs? I'm like, no, I, you know, y'all expect me to make my own. So I do. And, and yes, it does have a much better screen. <laughs> yes, it did take forever. That BBD group or BB, BBB group or was it BBD? It was BBD. Brother Baby Lock Deco, I believe it was. Or BBB, Brother Baby Lock Bernina. So that, it, yeah, we and there was a Yahoo group. There was all kinds of stuff. I mean, we we had it was fun and we were all learning. And it, it, I swear, if you go back, I, is Anne the Grand still out there? Is the um, Anne the Grand site still out there? You could tell when people were learning to digitize, they were given all of their stuff. They post every design that they ever made. And you can tell if, um, it, you can tell when they started learning, when they had perfect or they had gotten better at their tasks, then they started charging for their designs. But you can see, you can see some of those old designs. They were terrible. And you know, when we got certain stitches, so you knew when we got programmable stitches because everybody was using them and they were everywhere. So <laughs> it was funny. Um, qu quite funny, quite funny. All right. So I do have one thing I was going to show you today. I don't think I've missed any questions. If I have, let me know. I didn't mean to go off task here today, but it is kind of fun going back. and. Um, reliving in those days because we have come a long way baby a long long way trying to see if there's anything else up here before i move on uh, i'm still looking sorry scanning to make sure i'm not been that i'm not forgetting anything yeah, I mean, we all, I mean, we were looking for free stuff. We, just like everybody else, we were looking for free stuff. I mean, it's, you're, you're trying to learn, you're trying to, so you don't want to, you don't have a whole lot of money to invest in it. You're, you were, we were looking for free stuff. Okay. So if you watched SMP live yesterday, I started this on my PR1X. Okay. But What's different is that it's not a built-in design. It's one that I created in P Design 11 shortly before going on live. So this is my test stitch out and it's on my Santa bag. And I got to decide if I want to add stuff to it. I'm thinking I do. It's actually a laundry bag. So it's a big honking bag here with a big handle. But I thought it kind of looked like a Santa bag. So I've got my Merry Christmas on it and I may add some packages or some packages or ornaments or something. I'm not sure, but um, it, that you all got to see my, my test stitch out. So, I mean, that was the easy way to do it. Now let's go show you how I did it. Let's just do new page here and we're not going to save that. Let me come in and grab my text tool and type in Merry. Oops. I have cap locks on. Control enter goes to the second line. Enter enters the text and we want to turn off transformation and I want it center aligned. 
And then I'm going to do control M to move it to the middle. And I'm going to make it bigger. Although it's going to take it away. I don't know why I did that. So, ooh. Oh, hi, Bestina is my font. This is the one I got. So, yes, I knew I was going to need to change it after I did that. That was silly of me, wasn't it? Because it is so big. I think I ended up, and I know I ended up doing this. So, I'm holding my shift key down and pulling this, down, pulling this in. The reason I'm holding my shift key is so that it'll all come to the middle eventually. There we go. So, yes, I did do it as two different lines of text because otherwise I was going to have to change my line spacing. But we can change line spacing here. So if I reduce my line spacing, it will take away that space in the middle there. Instead of entering two lines of text. And let's see here. What else did I do to that? That's about it. As far as that part goes. Now let's make it bigger. And when I made it bigger, my satin stitches became too long. So if I take my measuring tool and I am in metric, if you don't remember, you can switch between metric and inches over on your page ruler just by clicking that little button. That is one of my favorite buttons. Measure your longest stitch. And from there to there, if you look down here at the bottom left corner, it's 11.72. That is way too long of a stitch. So I've got some stitches in there that needed to be split. Okay. So we're going to grab the shapes tool and I'm going to grab my curved line shape tool. You could do the straight if you want, but I find the curve easier to play with and left click down to just draw yourself a straight line. Oops, I do not want a, it doesn't matter, it's going to go away anyway, but I don't need that visual of the candle wicking stitch. So I'm going to come in and this is what I did. Oops, double click. And I'm just simply drawing a line where I want those stitches split. I don't want them. I don't want the whole thing split. I just want where they're too stretchy. And so I'm just kind of, oops, too far. Right mouse click if you don't like where you clicked before. Yes, I've asked for a split satin stitch, but if we ever get that, I will be amazed. Sometimes they listen. Double click. Double click. Okay. Y'all get the concept or do you want me to continue with this? Ah, shoot. We're almost done. We may as well do the whole thing. And I always do this in a different color than what my base letter is, just so that I can see it when it lands. So I know whether I've gotten rid of it or not when I go to do the next part. I see comments popping up, but my, my eyes are on my other screen. I'll answer them in just a second. Okay, so now I've got all my lines drawn in, okay? 
So I'm going to come and grab the M, come down here and grab my first letter, hold the control key down, grab my first little line. So you can see I've got red dash lines around that. Click your select tool, stamp emboss, engrave that line. Go grab back and grab the M again. Come down, grab the next piece, which is going to be first this time. Stamp emboss, engrave that line. And you're going to do this for each of those pieces. And if you just if you put one in a place that you don't like, you can always undo it or you can edit the stamp. But let me see here. Let's see what we can do. So and as as you emboss that line, the actual line itself goes away. It's just engraved down in that line. So now I'm on the R. So I'm going to come grab my R. Select it. Stamp emboss, engrave that line. Yes, it would be lovely if I could do them all at one time, but it will not let me do that. We'll try, but I'm pretty sure I'm stuck with one at a time. We'll try that. But I'm pretty sure I have to do them one at a time. Yep, see, got to do them one at a time. So come back up. Second R. Select it. Stamp emboss, engrave. And now we're on the Y. Stamp emboss, engrave that line. And we got another piece on the Y. So you guys got the concept now. How did I change the color of the text on the bottom? It basically, if you look, let's look at the difference between my letters here. So do you see how that line, how I've got a divot now in my text? It splits that satin up. And right now, this right here, if I hide, let me see here. Let me come and hide this piece right here. Let's turn the eyeball off. So you see, I've got really long satin stitches there. Once, when I go in and I engrave that, let's go grab the C. Now it splits that line to where that satin stitch is not so long. So that's what we're going for. And it does each, each letter. So each letter that I needed it to split, each part, you engrave it. Now, there is a shortcut for some of the stuff that I'm doing. So if I come in and grab my R and come grab this piece, I can double click here. Instead, let's go slide over. I'm on the I. So I, the reason it highlights all those letters at the same time is because um, it, it's one text stream. Oops, you do have to hit the select tool. It's it's one text stream. If I had only one, if I had entered it one letter at a time, it would only do one letter. But see right now it's picked up the one letter because I've got it select. I've got it picked. I don't have it selected yet. Once I hit my select tool, it grabs the whole text stream because it's all been entered as one line of text. And since doing the embossing or engraving here does not take away its text properties. Now, one thing I will tell you is if I go and I resize this after I've done this, my embossing would not be in the right place. I'll show you what I mean here in just a second. Let me finish this up. We're almost done. We're on the M. And you can tell when I'm teaching people that I tend to go back and do the select tool instead of double clicking. Although I double click. Oops, wrong letter. Last one. So now they're there if I want to move one. So it seems like one of mine may not have been exactly where I wanted it. Like my R is not quite like I want it. If I want to move it, I can edit my stamp. Oh, actually, 
hold on, click it and you can manipulate it and move it. So if you don't like where it lands, you can manipulate it a little bit with your edit stamp tool. You just basically do edit stamp. And when this little window flies up, you close that and then click on your stamp and you can move it where you want it to go. So if it's not quite where you want it, you can manipulate that a little bit. Now, if I came in here and I resized the whole kit and caboodle, Watch what happens to my lines, just so you understand what happens. I'm going to resize it. I'm holding my shift key to keep it in the middle. They go away. Um, I, you can see that I've got part of one right here. I've got part of something right here. I've got part of something right there. Your stamps stay in the same spot. So once you've done it, you if you want to resize, you're going to have to convert it to stitches first and then convert it back to blocks because otherwise it's not going to stay the way you want it. So I could say convert to stitches and then I could come back in here and convert it to blocks. Then I can resize. But if I resize the other way, I would want a satin stitch. If I resize the other way, I would get, and evidently it doesn't like the split satin that way. That's weird. undo a few times. Stitches convert to blocks, normal. And let's change it to a satin stitch. Yeah, it took away. So no, that doesn't work either. Um, you could, let's see here, let's convert it to stitches. And then let's hold the shift key down, control key. Control. Control key would do it. But you don't necessarily need it that way if you're going lower. It would be if you're going bigger. So hold your control key down. I'm doing control and shift to keep it in the center of my window. <clears throat> now I'm going to undo and undo and undo and go back to where I was there. Now I want to show you how to change the color of that bottom row of text. If you grab your select point tool and you highlight across the bottom of that, You'll notice how it grabs green points across the, all the bottoms of those. You can then change your color to green. So now you have your two color text. Okay. Um, let's come over here and see what we've got. A, you need a wired mouse. Um, you cannot do a wireless mouse on the machines you do you have to do a wired mouse so you don't have to get an expensive one but i mean even i use let's see here i use a wired mouse on my computer it just simply does better it likes me better and i finally found one that doesn't make noise so you you don't hear my click my clicks um yes you could do a thatch stitch as well um let's see here so, so that's what embossing does it, or, you know, the, the stamp emboss will stamp something into it. So if I had wanted to split it in a different manner, I could come in and instead of doing the lines that I did, but I kind of like those better, I could input stamps and I could come in and grab this and then you can just stamp them where you want them to go. So if you're wanting to add an interesting detail to something, basically it puts a programmable fill just in a couple of places. It doesn't do it for the whole thing. You can undo or you can come back and you can edit your stamp, select the stamp you want to edit and you can say, all right, you know, that's not the one. I think I want a thatched one. You can do that. It's a way of using a programmable fill without actually using a programmable fill. Let me undo. And the blue ones, just so you know, the blue ones fluff up, the red ones dig in, and the line ones do. So if I have, if you see one that says blue, if it's got red in it, it's going to engrave it. So that means it's going to dig in. See how that digs in. If it's got blue in it, it's going to, it's the boss. It's going to fluff up. So you see how that one fluffs? So that, that gives you the difference between what, what's the difference between a blue stamp and a red stamp? 
while the blue ones emboss. They the blue ones fluff up. If it's got a B in it, it's a boss. It means it's going to be floating on top. If it's got a, a R in it, engrave red, it digs in. So you dig in your grave. Um, that that's what it does. It it allows you to just actually do, Im, embed something into it. Um, uh, not really as pixels, Cindy. What it does is it breaks your stitches down into chunks um, so that you can edit just those parts of it. It allows you, blocks allow you to adjust the density and the stitches of what you've selected. So if I come in and let's see here, let me, let's just start a whole new window. Let's see here. Um, and I'm going to put this in a small hoop so y'all can see. So if I hold my control key down, it will let me resize and it will recalculate stitches, but I will get to a certain point that it can't recalculate. Okay. Is that um, you've, you exceed that amount that it can do something. So if I go to convert to blocks, it actually lets me resize. It will recalculate. It still will do that little mess up, but you can then come in, ungroup, and let me ungroup again, but I can then modify those blocks. So if I needed to fix that little area, I can come in and take the edit points of those blocks and move them where I need them to go. to close up my holes. So it, it breaks it down into chunks instead of leaving it as one big unit. So if you wanted to move that, you can, you can manipulate it to where it will actually work for you. Okay. Um, you're most welcome. Go back and play with that and have fun. Um, that is, Yes, you can see. Hold on just a second, DJ. Uh, let's see if y'all can see it. Can you see how it, the T really shows up there. You can see where the T just kind of split it right down the middle there. But it breaks up those stitches. Oh, I'm, I was looking at the, oops, sorry. Hold on. <laughs> Why is the, oh, well, the right, uh, why is the right screen not on screen? That's weird. Hold on. Let me just close some windows. Okay. My screen sharing went crazy. Entire screen. There we go. Okay. Let's try this again. All right. Sorry. Um, let me zoom out and let's try it again. Okay. So if I pull this design in and I hold down with a control key, you see how it breaks that up. It, it, there's a certain limit to where we can go, how big we can go with the design. Okay. So, if you convert to blocks instead, you're still going to have the same issue when you get to that area, but it allows you to fix it. So you can still see that I have that same issue. Let me ungroup and ungroup again to where I'm out of groups. You can then come in with your edit point tool and click on the area you want to work on and you can move those edit nodes and fix the areas. So it breaks it down into blocks of blocks of color that have edit nodes that let you work with them to where you can fix your design where it messed up. Okay, does that make sense now? Is that better? <laughs> 
So um, yes, that does work good with the embossing works good with um, feathers on a bird because you can give things texture. It gives you that a capability of just adding texture to stuff, the embossing and engraving. And uh, you know, Brex area is up. So it, without adding another color, without doing a whole lot of work. Now, I am not a big fan of programmable fill stitches. I'll be perfectly honest because I think it greatly increases your stitching time. It also increases the cap the possibility that your design will not meet. By that, I mean, depending on the direction that it stitches, you may have gaps. We can now control that. But for instance, let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's say you have a circle. And you choose a programmable fill stitch for the whole kicking a bottle. You see how that's going to stitch. Now let's watch it stitch. Let's watch this where it goes. It's going to start in the center where it started the fill down here in the center. And it will go part way and then come part way back. Well, what will happen is you will get a gap. Let me do this faster here. Well, that one's going to go all the way down. Well, isn't that fun? Doesn't, doesn't, it doesn't normally happen that way. If, however, let's do an entry and an exit point here. So usually it starts in the center and ends in the center. That's the line. I want the region. So if I have my region starting there and my region ending here, let's see what happens. Does that change anything? Oh, let's turn off the undersewing. That would have undo and undo. Let's see. Now, if we watch it so. See how it comes back from the bottom up to that point right there? What happens is, if you're, especially if you're working on a knit, where that line met, it will gap with a programmable still, fill stitch. So, if it's on a knit, it's really... Um, questionable whether to use a programmable fill stitch for the whole thing or whether to just texture it um, because those really do increase your stitch time and they they do increase the amount of stretch that happens to your fabric and when you go to do an area and it doesn't doesn't end on, a, on an outside edge then it can really mess up your design so okay um, Kelly Converting to blocks is when you're wanting to adjust the blocks itself. Converting to stitches is when you want to lock something into a fixed stitch format and you don't want it to have changes made to it. It's like saying, uh, it's like if I export it in a different format, it's locking it into that. Um, Vicki, I can most of the time. If there were holes in that, let's say I made a smiley face here. Modify overlap. Let's set whole sewing. And let's give this a different color so you can see a different color. Okay. So if there are holes in it, not so much. It is going to move around where it's going to move around to maximize getting somewhere. Uh, if it were just the circle, yes, I could have adjusted that. So if I take out my holes, and get rid of my circles. On this one, I can simply change my entry and exit point to where it's to where the region starts on one side and ends on the opposite. You can also play around with adjusting your angles. And it'll do it. So let's see here. Let me make it travel. And there you go. 
so that stopped it but you have to you do have to kind of you do have to kind of force it okay guys anything else for me today sorry about forgetting to well i don't know i forgot to i had it do a window instead of the screen is what happened so sorry about that <laughs> All right. If there is nothing else, I guess I am going to say ta-ta for the day. Y'all send in questions for next week. I may or may not be on. Okay. I will, I, we may take a vacation. I don't know. Um, we're kind of waiting to hear something about my brother's, or not my brother, my husband's work. So y'all have a great rest of the week. Thanks, Robin. I'm glad you enjoyed the show today. And thank you to Miss Cindy. You guys have a wonderful rest of your week and don't stress yourself out too much. We'll talk to you later. Bye.